Boston Celtics get their eighth straight win. Why a Joe Missoula timeout might have changed this game and why the bench is making its playoff contribution right now. It's a bonus Lockdown Celtics podcast. Thanks to Blockbuster Bread, it's holiday season drop Drew in the mix. And three from KT, no, we not on the Knicks. Flush a competition like Al on Giannis. Juice and Big Zeus still being counts finest. Been a great team going up in the Raptors. Watch the seeds gain in locked on after. Corrales on the breakdown. Clutch like a tip from Dean White on the breakdown. John on the mic, document and domination. Matter pen of back, they it's all seeds nation. Rain and Jace, how we started raising business, how we finish. Locked on. Celtics pod, home of the winners. Hey there, welcome back to the Lockdown Celtics Podcast. It's right here on the Lockdown Podcast Network, where it's your team every day, and I got you covered every Monday through Friday with a free, fresh podcast that drops directly to your device, plus bonus podcasts like this one after Friday games and tomorrow after Saturday games. So make sure you are subscribed wherever you get your podcast, however you're listening to it right now. Subscribe, hit that subscribe button, get into the YouTube page, get into the comment section there, subscribe there. Let me know what you're thinking. If you're new to the show, I'm John Corrales. I used to play a long, long time ago. Now I'm covering the Celtics as a beat writer for Boston Sports Journal. So check out my work over there. Today we're talking about a very easy Celtics win over the Detroit Pistons. Didn't start that way, but it ended that way. I'll talk about later how the bench is making its playoff contribution right now. We'll get into the Peyton Pritchard because that's his his game is part of that whole conversation. Uh, Jalen Brown had a big game. Let's just start right there. Jalen Brown, 33 points on 19 shots. That, my friends, is good. So that's the type of deep analysis that you're 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 getting here on the Lockdown Celtics podcast. 33 points on 19 shots is good. You might not have known that. Uh, yeah, Jalen was was really good. And in, in fact, it was kind of like a a quiet. 33. The, it wasn't a lot of loud points. It's not like he had a big dominating stretch, although in the third quarter he he did kind of like take over a little bit, but it wasn't a 33-point performance that stood out in a um uh, in a in a in a just kind of like extraordinary way. And I say this as a compliment. It was just a very kind of easy when you're that good. You can just drop 33 without like blinking. And he had four steals. Uh, and he did it with a usage rate below 34%. It he had he's had 10 games this season where the usage rate was higher. Usage is a possession where basically you're the final touch on a possession, a shot, a pass, an assist, or a turnover. Those are that all goes into the usage. So it's not like he had this incredible high usage rate. He just had a really good game. He is playing very well with uh, Tatum sitting out and, and just the Celtics have this kind of luxury here. Uh, Sit Tatum, sit Jalen, you know, whichever, however it goes, you, you still have one of these guys against these bad teams, Pistons, uh, Portland, Utah, Washington. This is a great stretch of the schedule here. It's actually worked out really well. The Celtics had this front-loaded, really tough schedule, and now they're, they're they have, I think, the easiest remaining strength of schedule. And this is what you're supposed to do. You, you this is a great opportunity for Boston. Uh, they sat uh, Jason, they sat Holiday, they sat Horford, and not an issue here. Celtics win it by 27. Jalen, obviously powered things. Uh, he was, he was extraordinarily good in this one. Peyton Pritchard had a great game, uh, in this one, 20 points, nine assists. The the Celtics backcourt of Derek White and Peyton Pritchard, 39 points and 20 assists combined. That's going to win you a lot of games. Um, uh, Drew Holiday was out. Uh, he has, as the globe has, uh, characterized it as a dead arm, uh, or something he it's bothering him a little bit. The Celtics have again, and this luxury of like, yeah, take your time and I'll get more into this in a little bit, but they don't have to rush him back. Like they didn't have to rush back. Chris stops Porzingis. So Pritchard and, and Derek white had a, a great night there in the backcourt. In fact, 39 points, 20 assists and 10 combined rebounds. 
and together two turnovers for your starting backcourt. Porzingis was, was good, you know, nothing crazy. 19 points, four rebounds, uh, an assist. So he, he was good. Where the Celtics time out in what I said in the open was the, the kind of the game changer. James Wiseman had a, a big first quarter. He had three offensive rebounds. The Pistons had five offensive rebounds uh, to start the quarter. They came out. They played hard. As, as always, and I said this during the, what was that, 28-game losing streak, I, I knew the Pistons were going to get it right because they're too – they're not great, right? But they're too good to, to lose that many games. They just had an incredible, weird, anomalous stretch of bad luck, uh, injuries and whatnot. They come out and they play hard. They, they, they are a tough, physical team, and they're hard to beat. And Wiseman is slowly trying to like, he, he's, he's coming into his own a little bit. He's still a young guy. There's still time for him to figure himself out. And a game like this kind of shows he, he had uh, 24 points, nine rebounds, five offensive rebounds. He had four assists. He was a big part of why the Pistons were in this for the first quarter and a half, uh, but it was a timeout in the first quarter after his third, I, I think it was right after his third offensive rebound, where Joe Mazzulla was as pissed off as you, as you see him for during the season. He he basically calls a timeout. You can see on, on camera, he's like, what the F are we doing? Right? He was so pissed at these guys. I mean, he calms down and does what a coach does. He calms down and gets into the in, – into the, uh, the huddle and talks to them calmly like an NBA coach. If he was a European coach, maybe he would continue ripping into his guys because European coaches have a, a, you know, a different kind of mentality. But uh, anyway, that timeout, uh, I think partly kind of refocused the guys, got them to start boxing out a little bit. Uh, Xavier Tillman, who I think is going to be a, a contributor and and could potentially swing a playoff game, did not play well, and, and getting him out of the game changed things a little bit. I think Tillman struggled with their pick-and-roll coverage. I think right now, just as a side note, just to divert myself a little bit, Tillman would benefit from a little bit more stability, and the Celtics have like these two things going on where – and again, I'm going to talk about this in a little bit, but they don't have to play everybody uh, all the time right now. They have a chance to get everybody right. But for Tillman to come in at the trade deadline and it's like, okay, I'm playing with these guys. Here's my role with Tatum and Brown and, and White and Holiday and, and Porzingis. I, my role is this. But with so many guys out, it's like, okay, hey, now you're starting. Oh, okay, great. Now you're playing with Porzingis a lot. Now you're playing with Horford a lot. We want to see this. We want to see that. And it, it's kind of a little bit hard. You're kind of being pulled in a lot of different directions. So Tillman didn't have a good game here. I'm not overreacting to Tillman having a, a bad game because I do think that he's, first of all, he's very good. Al Horford has said basically, like, I love playing with Tillman. He's He, he makes my job easier. So I'm going to trust Al Horford there. Uh, I, I've seen Tillman play. People in Memphis have talked to me about to the, They're like, you're going to love Tillman. He's really good. So I, I still am, am more positive, much more positive than negative. This is just a bad game. Um, but getting him out of the game kind of flipped things. Getting O'Shea Brissett into the game was – a, a kind of a flashpoint there. The Celtics stopped giving up a lot of offensive rebounds. They kind of changed the matchups a little bit, changed how they were covering the, the pick and roll. And they were able to, in the second quarter, only allow one offensive rebound, whereas in the first quarter they allowed five. So that, that allowed the Celtics to turn what was a one-point deficit with eight minutes to go into a, I think, 13-point halftime lead. And from there, or a uh, 15-point halftime lead, from there, it was just, that was the the, the difference. 
and it never really got threatened in the fourth quarter. Late third, beginning of the fourth, the Pistons made it, I don't want to say interesting, but, you know, 15 points. It was just the, the lead had gotten up over 20. Then it got down to 15, and it, they never threatened, but in today's NBA, 15-point lead is less than comfortable. So, uh, but that that's where the lead stuck. And it was, I would say it was an easy win regardless. So that timeout kind of refocused guys, changed the matchups, changed the lineups, and the Celtics came off and uh, cruised to the win. They end up winning by 27. Eight straight wins. Celtics win uh, eight in a row. And this is where the bench and and Peyton Pritchard, who was was really good in this game, has been really good lately. Had uh, twenty points in this one, nine assists, shot uh, eight of fifteen overall, four of nine from three. Just another big game from Peyton Pritchard, who you know we talked about it in the last podcast about is he playoff? Is is he going to be a big playoff contributor? It doesn't matter. The bench right now, however the bench is used in the playoffs, the bench is making its playoff contribution right now. Let's go through this eight-game winning streak. Starts with uh, a win in Phoenix, no Porzingis. A win in Portland by 22, no Porzingis, no Holiday. Win in Utah, no Porzingis, no Horford, no Brown. Win in win at uh, home over Phoenix, no Porzingis. Win number five. No Porzingis, Brown, or White to beat the Wizards by 26. Win number six, no Jason Tatum. No Holiday. This is the game that Sam Hauser missed after spraining the ankle in Washington. Which, side note, if you go to my, um, I, I tweeted it out and I put it on Boston Sports Journal. What was up with the sideline in Washington? Go look at that video again. It's on my Twitter. It's at John underscore Corrales on Twitter. Uh, I tweeted it out the sideline, look at the sideline from this game in, in, uh, Detroit and look at this, look at the sideline from any other game. And then look at the one in Washington where, uh, Hauser sprained his ankle. There's no room on the sideline that something was up with that, that court or whatever The the, the seats and the bench was right up against the sideline. No wonder Hauser sprained an ankle. I'm surprised more guys didn't sprain an ankle. There was not enough room on the sideline. So just side note there. Sideline note there. <laughs> All right. Anyway, uh, win number seven, Milwaukee. Two-point win, no Holiday, no Hauser. Uh, then this was their eighth straight win. No Tatum, no Holiday, no Horford. Eight, eight games that they've won in a row. The average scoring margin is 18 points. Not one regular starting lineup, not one regular full bench rotation. Their top six, their top seven, their top eight, a mess in this eight, eight game streak. Now in full disclosure, obviously you play Utah, Portland, Washington, Detroit twice. Uh, that's not exactly a murderer's row. So this is the time that you can take some guys out of the rotation, sit them down, have them just rest. But that is normally like, okay, we're going to rest guys during the week part of the schedule. And maybe you're going to have some tight games against lesser opponents. Maybe you're going to drop a game where you're like, ah, they should have beaten Phoenix, but they didn't because they didn't have, you know, Porzingis or they didn't have like their, their full roster, but they didn't, they didn't do any of that stuff. They beat Phoenix twice. Now, Phoenix hasn't beaten. Uh, they, they don't beat teams above 500. They have a losing record against teams above 500. Uh, Milwaukee, no Giannis. So, obviously, there's caveats to all of this stuff. But the whole point is that the Celtics didn't even give in to any of the potential pitfalls against these bad teams. They sat at least one of their starters in all of these games. They sat out in this particular game, Tatum, Holiday, and Horford. 
So their best player, their best defender, and their sixth man. And they win by 27. Why? Because their bench has been playing off the charts good. Peyton Pritchard, in three starts during this streak, has averaged 18 points in those three starts. He has shot 52.5%, 45.5% from three, eight assists, and one turnover per game. In his three starts, he's a plus 11 during the streak, plus 15.3 as a starter. Pritchard has been balling out in these eight games. Hauser has been great. He has hit uh, six, four, ten, four three-pointers in in these games. He has not only done that, he has uh, blocked shots in Phoenix, Portland, twice against Utah. He has a steal in every game except for one. He has been a plus 10, plus 20, plus 14, plus 1, plus 18, plus 15 over the six games that he has played in this streak. Cornette has started three games, started twice, I'm sorry. 19 rebounds in those starts, 10 offensive rebounds in his two starts, right? Six assists in those two starts. The bench is playing great, and that doesn't even factor in O'Shea Brissett. Shvi Mikhailuk has has played and gotten a start. Uh, Tillman, despite this bad game, has made contributions. He's had actually a lot of good contributions in his minutes over the course of this streak. So the Celtics bench, and why I say the playoffs are right now for Boston's bench, it's because they are allowing the Celtics starters to get right. The Celtics starters and the Celtics top six with Horford, they're going to, we we broke it all down in the last podcast with Tom Westerholm. Those guys are going to get a bulk of the minutes. With all of the minutes that the top six are going to get, there's going to be about 20 minutes left for one of the guys off the bench, two of the guys off the bench. So basically the top six are going to play most of these games and maybe all of these games, there might be some games where they they just go six deep and that is it. If that's the case, it's because the bench is good. Somebody's going to try to tell you if the Celtics go six deep and let's just say they play an Eastern conference finals against the bucks and they win in what, six, and they play mostly just six guys. You say, okay, some situational seventh guy steps in. And they'll say, hey, Boston's bench isn't good enough to play in the playoffs. And I'll say, no, you're wrong. It's because Boston's bench is good that they didn't play in the playoffs. Because they're so good, they play now. They are playing in March when the Celtics need to get right, when the Celtics need to get everybody set and healthy and fresh for the playoffs. This bench is coming in and just, they're a thresher, just mowing through. The Celtics aren't just winning these games. They're not just beating bad teams. They're mowing through bad teams while sitting one, two, three main guys, and the bench is coming in. It's like, yeah, no problem. You're getting garbage time with three guys, three of your top six sitting on the bench. You're getting garbage time. That's not supposed to happen. But this bench is playing so well right now that they're making their playoff contribution right now by getting Holiday a chance to get his shoulder completely right. It's one of those injuries where over the course of, I don't know, whatever part of the season, you can say, well, oh, yeah, man, he he got that he got that shoulder injury in March. He just kind of lingered through April and May. He just could never get right, and it kind of impacted him in the playoffs. doesn't have to happen that way now because the bench is playing so good. Porzingis said, hey, if it was a matter of, you know, life or death, I would have played. If it was a playoff, I would have played. But the Celtics had a chance to sit him an extra two, three games, get him right. He's not going to play. I doubt he's going to play against Chicago. The Celtics can do this. 
Maybe they sit Jalen Brown. Maybe they sit Derek White. Maybe it, they sit there and say, hey, we're, we're going to rest the other three guys and do a sort of uh, spring training split squad type of thing. And they just say, okay, now, now you three guys of the top six go play against Chicago. And maybe they win that game too because the bench is playing so well. By playing the way they're playing, Pritchard, Cornette, Hauser, all these other guys off the bench, and allowing Tatum to get a couple of games off, by allowing Brown to get a couple of games off, by allowing Holiday to get right with his shoulder, and Porzingis to get right with his hamstring, and Horford to just continue to take these games off and stay fresh. The Celtics have a real strong chance, and there's a, there's a few weeks of the season left, so anything can happen. They have a real strong chance of getting into the playoffs fresh, healthy, and ready to go. And if they're fresh enough and healthy enough where the bench doesn't have to play, it's because the bench made their playoff contributions right now and allowed the Celtics to have the luxury that most teams don't have that guys don't have to play through these nagging things, that they can rest through these nagging things, and they can get right for the playoffs. The Celtics have earned this. They've earned this. They have beaten all of the, the, the tough competition already. All of the great teams, all of the tough teams, they've played them all already. So if people want to say, yeah, but the Celtics are going through the soft part of the schedule, so you know this doesn't tell us anything, like, yeah, well, it doesn't tell us anything except the Celtics are able to get rest and they're able to get themselves right. So shout out to the bench. Shout out to Pritchard and Hauser and Cornette. Uh, and Cornette didn't even have a good game in this one, but shout out to all of the guys who have been contributing. Whether it's a good game in this one or a good game in the next one or a good game in the last one, everybody's made a contribution. They're getting combinations that are contributing all the time. It's an amazing luxury. I can't believe that they're this good. So enjoy it, folks. Enjoy it. Celtics, big win over Detroit, and they're not missing a beat, even though they're missing players. Chicago on Saturday, I will have a post-game podcast after the Bulls game. Hopefully, it's after another 27-point win. If it's not, eh, no what? Celtics magic number is down to two. So Celtics, if they beat Chicago and if Milwaukee loses to OKC on Sunday, Eastern Conference is all wrapped up officially. And now all we have to worry about is the um, NBA overall seed. So I don't know. Maybe, maybe you want Milwaukee to beat OKC on Sunday because the Celtics will get another win somewhere along the way with the magic number is two. Actually, now that I say it out loud, we should probably root for uh, the the Bucks to to beat the Thunder because that helps the overall. That's that's the tighter race. Whatever it doesn't matter. The Celtics are going to get the top seed regardless. It's just a matter. Of, we want it now. Now 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 now. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. I hope you have enjoyed this podcast. I hope you have enjoyed uh, the bonus. I hope you enjoyed the Monday through Friday. I uh, would love it if you subscribe, uh, get into that YouTube page, get into that comment section. Let me know what you think. Mm -hmm. And I would love it if you share the podcast, spread the word, tell everybody they should be listening to and watching the Lockdown Celtics podcast right here on the Lockdown Podcast Network. It's your team every day. And three from KT, no, we not on the next. Watch your competition like Al on Giannis. Juice and Big Zeus, still being town's finest. Been a race team going up in the rafters. Watch the seeds gaining locked on after. Corrales on the breakdown. Clutch like a tip from D. White on the breakdown. John on the mic, document and domination. Matter Penna back, they it's all seeds nation. Bill Russell, the bird, Hondo to Rondo. KG in the truth, all the legends in the roof. Two Tommy points for Reggie and DJ. IT the killer with the big heart was the hardest. Rain and Jay's how we started raising business. How we finished. Locked on Celtics pod, home of the winners. Peace.